Okay, were there any questions about um, the beginning of the alcohols? Mostly a synthesis of alcohols, grignards. No? Okay. I just handed out a packet of problems that have answers. So that means we can do all those, right? I guess we'll have to find out. So as you're looking through there, is there anything that you have a question about? Otherwise, we'll just work on these problems and I'll walk around and check whether you're correct or not. I think I can, I can sit here and stare at you awkwardly as long as you want to stare at me awkwardly, so. Ashton. Uh, part number three, it says, give a Bernard reagent and a Carbonyl valve. So how would you do that? Okay. So just for that for that one we have to remember what what the Grignard reagents are. And so with our with our Grignard reagents we've got we're taking a blank slide. So what we're doing is we're going to take, with a Grignard, we're going to create a C minus. And the C minus is going to react with a carbonyl. So that's the way we're starting now. Very similar to how we took a triple bond C minus, the alkynyl anion, and reacted it with a carbonyl. So if we have, for instance, We take a, usually an alkyl bromide or any bromide, and when you react this with the magnesium metal, it will replace the bromine with a magnesium, well, it'll combine to form a magnesium bromine plus. So we'll end up with a CH3CH2 minus with an MGBR plus counter ion. So now what we've done is now we've made this anion which can act as either a strong base or a nucleophile. And what we're going to do then is we're going to take that CH3, CH2 minus and we're going to react it with, and there's of course always the MGBR plus with it, whether we show it, and we're going to react it with carbonyls. So this one you could literally interpret as acetone with two CH3s, or there could be other groups there. The CH3 minus comes in, adds to the carbonyl, so that we end up with the O minus. And again, if, this is, if you're having like a sense of deja vu, it's because this is exactly what we did with the C triple bond, C minus. So now we have that alkoxide 
And now what we're going to do is now we're going to add H plus and H2O to it so that the O minus can become protonated so that we can form our final product, which is going to be then the alcohol with that new CH2CH3 added to it. So this is a synthesis of alcohols using Grignard reagents. And if I put, for instance, over here, if I say R1 and R2 to indicate, you know, the different groups that could be attached, if we have to think about this backwards, so in other words, if I have to say, well, what, what reagents would I use to make that, here's what I know. I know that this C and this OH came from what group? <coughs> it came from the original the original carbonyl group. So that means that I can turn this into any carbonyl. Now, that carbonyl has to have, if I say, okay, here, I'll do that. I can even change it into colors, right? The COH became, came from the original carbonyl group. Now what I have is now I have two groups attached to that carbonyl. If I just gave you this molecule and said, how would you make this? You can choose any of these three groups to attach to the carbonyl. Because I'm saying, how would you synthesize it? So whatever two groups you choose are going to basically make the, are going to react with the carbonyl, are going to be the carbonyl. Then the third group is going to be the C minus. So there's there's at least two different ways. Well, actually, there's three different ways to do this if all three groups are different. So you could say, which let me find a let me find another empty slide here, or actually let me put in a new slide. Blank slide, blank. So if I took that molecule, so R1 with my OH and then R2 and then CH2CH3, said, give me different methods to make this using a Grignard. You could say, well, how about I do R1 attached to the carbonyl, R1 and R2, and then what would I add after that? I would add CH3, CH2 minus. I like to keep the minus with the carbon that it's supposed to be with. So I could add a CH2, CH3 minus. Now we're going to write this a lot of ways, but we should probably get into the habit of putting the MGBR plus there. So that's one method. I could say, let's see, R2. I could say, how about I do R1 with now the CH2, CH3 attached to the carbonyl. What am I gonna what am I going to add to that? Ketone. The R2 minus that alkyl group with a negative charge with the MGBR plus. And R1 and R2 could be methyls, ethyls, isopropyls, they could be any alkyl group. And then if, then of course if I had R2 attached to the carbonyl with the CH2, CH3, then what would I add? What Grignard would I add there? I could add 
R1 minus with the MGBR plus. So in that, in that group of problems, what I've asked you to do is to basically, here's a molecule, how many different ways can you make that? And so what we have to do is recognize that the OH and the carbon it's attached to came from this original carbonyl. And so then two of the groups would be attached to the carbonyl and the third one would be the would be the car, or the Grenier reagent. So there's multiple ways to do each one of those problems. But we have to begin to think Again, we have to kind of begin to think backwards here. I'm doing that by asking you, well, first of all, by asking you to remember the reagents, bless you, in the first, in the first part of these problems. So what reagents would I use to do all these different transformations? And every one of those is a review from last semester, the critical part being there last semester and then writing the products of those different reactions. And whenever we do a Grignard reaction, like let's say we're gonna do this one, there will always be a then H plus H2O step because the acid cannot be present with the Grignard. If the acid is present with, when you're making your R minus, the R minus deprotonates it and kills the Grignard, so there's no more nucleophile. So if we were in the lab doing this, which I don't, which we're not going to do this semester, depending on whose curriculum we're running, we would sometimes do a Grignard. We would actually have to make the Grignard by reacting the alkyl halide with magnesium metal, and then we would add the, the carbonyl, and then after it's all reacted, we would add the acid. So the acid cannot be present with the Grignard. That's why there's a then H plus H2O step. And so for those reactions, that's what they all are. All right. So for the first ones, there's a set of reagents at the bottom of the, or at the middle of the second page that you can choose from. And then after that, All right. so are there any other questions? Then what I propose is try them. I will pull up the answer key. Hopefully I have it. If not, I'm going to have to answer. I'm going to have to come up with those on the fly. Don't worry, I can do that. Maybe. And then I will, and then if you have any questions, yell at me. I'll walk around. Okay, so 18 says we're going to take a benzene ring with a minus charge with the MgBr plus, and we're going to react that with cyclohexanone. Now, the ring is just the R group with a, it's just R minus. It just so happens that the benzene ring is the R. So that's going to come in and add to this carbonyl. 
and then the pair of electrons are going to go to the O minus. So let's just write the carbonyl part without with now an O minus on it. That's what we're always going to do when when something comes in and reacts with the carbonyl. I'm going to write the carbonyl group without the double bond with an O minus. And the O minus is going to eventually become O H. So what's attached then is my third group cuz one side of the ring is the first group, the other side of the ring is the second group. What's the third group? The third group is now the benzene ring. So it looks like it's kind of a funny structure, but that's that's how you would write it. So here's group number one, here's group number two, here's group number three, now with the O minus. So that when that gets treated with the H plus, we now have the alcohol then with the benzene ring. Jake. 21. 21. Okay, 21 sort of like that. 21 it said, how do you make how do we make um, this one? And then there's what a CH2, CH3 group there. All right, so as I started out with, we've got three groups attached to what was the carbonyl. Right, group number one, group number two, and group number three. Now, I actually don't have three ways to do this. Right, because breaking these two groups, the part of the ring, that means I'd have to form the ring, which I could do, but not today. So I'm going to force myself to say, you know what? I got to keep those two groups intact, so there's my original carbonyl. So two of the groups are automatically going to come from the ring. So what am I going to add to that ring then? What's the third group? CH3 minus. CH3, CH2 minus. So if I add that group with then again the MGBR plus, if I add that, that's going to come in add to the carbonyl and I'm going to end up then making adding that ethyl group and forming that molecule. So when the carbonyl group is part of the ring you're kind of stuck because you have to keep the ring together. And so that there's really only one way to do that reaction. Tony. So 25. Oh, 25 is a new reaction, sort of. I need to make a carboxylic acid. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to react the alkyl group then with something that makes a carboxylic acid. Now, a couple ways I could think about this if I didn't remember the reagent. Anybody remember the reagent? Was it in the video? CO2. It was CO2, right? But, so, what have we been doing? We've been saying, you know what? The OH group was originally a carbonyl. So if I say that, then here's one of the two reagents I have to use. I just made my OH group, the carbonyl, and I disconnected the other part. So what gets added to that? Well, this came from the CO2. That means a 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon ring, a CH2 minus, CH2, CH2, CH3, that 4 carbon ring with the MGBR plus counter ion. That's what you're going to add to CO2. And what it does, this comes in to add to the carbonyl and one of the CO bonds breaks to form then the O minus and it's the O minus then gets protonated. 
So you basically form a carboxylate, a deprotonated carboxylic acid. So that's a new, that's a new reaction. The organization that I have for this is, how do you make a, and, and this is the way most books will do it, they'll say, okay, how do you make a primary alcohol? And so if you look at, if I come over here, and I say, okay, I need a primary, I need a primary alcohol. That means the OH is attached to the to a CH2 group attached to some R group. So if I'm adding the R minus, what did the original carbonyl start out as? It started out as two H's attached to the carbonyl. So if you add formaldehyde, which is what this is called, that's the one carbon aldehyde, and you add an R minus, any R minus, to formaldehyde, you're gonna make a primary alcohol. Because I only am adding one alkyl group, and the other two are hydrogens. So if you said, well, I wanna make a secondary alcohol. I need to add my R minus to a carbonyl that has just one alkyl group, right? Because in the end, secondary alcohol is going to have two R groups and an H. So I say, okay, then I need to add it to now an aldehyde with an alkyl group. And so that's going to make a secondary alcohol. And then how do you make a tertiary alcohol? Don't react my Grignard with an aldehyde, react it with a with a carbonyl with two alkyl groups, a ketone. And so if you react that with the ketone, now I'm going to end up with a product that has three alkyl groups. Two of them from the carbonyl, the one of them from the Grignard. So textbooks will spend a lot of time saying primary, how do you make primary, how do you make secondary, how do you make tertiary, and the probably making it more complicated than it needs to be. If you just think about what am I doing, I'm turning a carbonyl into a COH and adding a new group. And the two groups that were already there stay there. And you could go through and you could color code this if you wanted to. Like what was there originally, what was in the ketone originally, and then what part did I just add? And that's why when you do you know, the part three here, 19 through 25, it's up to you to decide what to add, which means there's multiple ways to do this. There's multiple alkyl groups that you could add as, as carbanions. And one thing that I heard from, or that I saw as I was walking around was, so remember that what we did last week was we took, a, we took the amid and we deprotonated the terminal alkyne. And so what did we make? We made a C minus, the alkynyl anion. When we added it to the carbonyl group, what did it do? It came in, added to the carbonyl, the pair of electrons moved there, and ultimately we ended up with the OH group. So what we did last week was foreshadowed what we did today, which is the idea of here's a C minus that I can make by a simple deprotonation, and that C minus is now going to react with the carbonyl. The problem, the problem is that there's no base that can deprotonate an alkane. 
Bless you. And so what Victor Grignard came up with, and he used he used previous results of uh, Barbier, I believe. I sort of did my thesis work on stuff related to this. So what so what they found was they found that if you can't deprotonate the hydrogen, what you do is you put a halogen there and then you react it with magnesium metal or you might react it with lithium metal or you re might react it with sodium metal or you might react it with potassium metal. And what you end up doing then is making the C minus and having each one, having one of any of those as your counter ions. And so that gets around the idea that I can't make it an, a methyl CH3 minus by deprotonation. Instead, I do the halogen and then I turn it into a C minus. And that's why, that's why Grignard won the Nobel Prize, and that's why his name is like known forever with every organic student, because this is an important reaction. And I probably said in the video, if you come up with a way to make, not, not so much now, but if you come up with a way to form carbon-carbon bonds, you're going you're gonna to at least get your name known. You can at least get the, name, name, the reaction named after you. Nobel Prize, maybe not so much now as in the early days, but forming CC bonds is a premium. So everybody that came up with that in the 18, early 1900s all won Nobel Prizes, including Gridier. So it's really the same reaction over and over and over again. The, f the four in them are, oh, sadly, those are, those are review reactions from last semester. Adding H plus H2O to double bonds, substituting alkyl halides with OH minus or H2O. Oh, no, rearrangements. So sometimes I won't always have a pre-packet with me when there's no questions at the beginning, but sometimes I will. I will, I, all I got to do is push the button and I'll release the answer key for this. So if you want to go through and answer that, um, I would like on your way out the door here, I would like your, I'd like your Scantron for your the review problems and what else would I like? Well, I'd like your problems, your homework problems if you didn't turn them in on Friday of last week and nope, I already gave you those. I have some problems for Friday on alkynes. Okay, so you can take these while you're turning in everything else up front. And those are due Friday. And they're on Canvas as such. I can like both them to the order. I can get one more. Nope. No. No. As long as it is the whole punch and answer. Hey, like, okay. um, I don't know what a scan count is. Oh, you didn't? Okay. No, I wrote the answer on the paper. Do you want me to just come through after the video? Yeah, why don't you? Okay. Why don't you? I'll I'll uh, I'll print it out. Okay, because I'm like I feel bad like writing like that. Yeah, no, 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 that's fine. Okay. Yeah, you know what? And I and I forgot that I didn't print you one out, so I'll print you one out and um, just stop by later today. Okay. Uh, anytime except between now and ten thirty and okay. one to two. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Have to make up last hour. No problem. Okay.